Welcome. Now in this module, we're going to take a look at a case study for C++ application security hardening. And as we had identified earlier, the Carnegie Mellon Software Engineering Institute, or SEI, which is uh, the URL uh, that you can see on the screen, has an excellent set for security code implementation or software security implementation for not only C++, but also for C language, for Android, for Perl, um, and for a few other uh, types of, uh, of platforms in the, in the software domain. So this is an excellent resource. And as you can see on the next screen here, this is the eight step security hardening methodology, which has been proposed in this course. And whatever asset we are talking about, or we are taking into consideration for security hardening, in this case, it's a C++ application. We'll go through the same routine of eight steps. Identify the critical asset, research on applicable security controls, make a checklist of applicable controls, document the controls into the SOP, step number four. Step number five, implement the controls on a test setup, and then you validate uh, the control implementation uh, in step number six, and then we prepare for change management. Um, we initiate the entire change management process. And finally, you implement on the production. Uh, step number eight, and then monitor. So the control set that we have selected here is just one of the controls, and there are a few dozen controls which are available on the URL that we've showed you. And we'll just walk you through to one, through one single control, and that'll give you an idea of the nature of the control and what needs to be done. So there are about um, 10 controls for C++, which are categorized, and five of them are shown on the screen. Rule one, Declarations and initial, initialization, which is DCL. Uh, rule two, expressions. Uh, rule three, integers. Rule four, containers. Rule five, characters and strings. So these are um, uh, these controls are expressed on this website in the form of rules. Rule number six is memory management. Rule seven, input output. Uh, rule eight, exceptions and error handling. Rule nine, object oriented programming. And rule ten, concurren concurrency. And usually there's a miscellaneous section as well, uh, which is available on the SCI. And when you go, please go to this website and have a look. Um, and th there you can see concurrency. And then we have this uh, CON50, do not destroy a mutex while it is locked. This is, what, this is the control that we'll actually look at. Okay, so mutex objects uh, are used to protect shared data from being concurrently accessed. If a mutex object is destroyed while a thread is blocked, waiting for the lock, Critical sections and shared data are no longer protected. The C++ standard, thread.mutex.class, paragraph 5, and this is the reference number from ISO IEC, states the following. And this is great because uh, this is referring to the C++ standard. The behavior of a program is undefined if it destroys a mutex object owned by any thread or a thread terminates while owning a mutex object. This is an example uh, in the red border that you can see on the screen for a non-compliant code example. And here the accessed, access data protected by the lock is shown in green in the middle. Now, the non-compliant code example demonstrates the following. This non-compliant code example creates several threads that each invoke the do work function, passing a unique number as an ID. Unfortunately, this code contains a race condition allowing the mutex to be destroyed while it is still owned because start threads may invoke the mutex's destructor before all of the threads have exited. Very interesting. This is an example of how to do it correctly. The compliant code on your screen and the compliant code example, this compliant solution eliminates the race condition by extending the lifetime of the mutex so that we don't, we don't face that problem. So uh, if you are a C++ developer, you must spend time um, looking at the URL which was shown on the first, uh, first slide of this module. And I, I cannot stress enough that the Software Engineering Institute um, controls which are suggested by SEI uh, here for software security are really tremendous. It's a great resource and we should really take advantage of this if you're a software developer in C++. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.